Isn't it just harder for athletes to cheat now? He says no. Not gonna change, it got worse. 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 Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 biggest sports scandals. It was almost like dropping the atomic bomb. They never knew the devastation uh, that it could do to a program. For this list, we're focusing on scandals in the sports world that contain elements of controversy, planning, concealing, or even conspiracy. Which scandal had you covering your mouth with your hand? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Number 20, 2007 Formula One Spygate. Info leaks are common in the world of sports, but this was on a whole other level. In 2007, the Ferrari team suspended their chief mechanic, Nigel Stepney, after it was discovered that he had passed along important information to McLaren chief designer Mike Coughlin. Although the McLaren team claimed no wrongdoing, the FIA Council's investigation would prove otherwise, revealing that they were in possession of over 700 pages of documentation pertaining and belonging to Ferrari. On the face of it, uh, if one team has 700 pages of documents, all the information about another team, that is not correct from a sporting point of view. When we got all the facts, then we'll decide what to do. McLaren was fined a whopping $100 million and stripped of all their constructor points for their misconduct. But this would not be the only Spygate incident that occurred that year. The team's drivers were given immunity in return for providing evidence, and there is no penalty in regard to drivers' points. Number 19, Patriot Spygate. The very same year, the NFL's New England Patriots were caught illegally videotaping opposing team coaching signals from an unauthorized location during a Week 1 showdown against the New York Jets. During the game near halftime, a Patriots video assistant was caught capturing hand signals from New York's defensive assistants on video. After an investigation, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell went on to fine Patriots head coach Bill Belichick $500,000 and the team $250,000. The Patriots also had to forfeit their first-round pick in the 2008 draft. I made a mistake. I, I was wrong. I was wrong. This wouldn't be the last scandal the Patriots were involved in as the team would again be mired in controversy for their involvement in the infamous Deflate Gate and yet another Spygate incident involving the Cincinnati Bengals in 2019. Number 18, Melbourne Storm Salary Cap Breach. They're jumping for joy, Melbourne. We had some rats in our ranks. Those were the words of Melbourne Storm owner John Hardigan after his team was involved in the biggest scandal in Australian sports history. Over the last few weeks, it's come to light that the Storm has engaged in a long-term system of operating what might conveniently be called two sets of books. The rugby squad had won premierships in both 2007 and 2009. And let's just say that a few perks were offered beyond the usual contract negotiations. This club is a great club. It's a strong club. It's a very proud club. Some players were given under-the-table benefits that doubled their official contracts, and others received 30 large for home and entertainment expenses. The secret files outlining the under-the-table deals were kept in a separate room at the Storm's headquarters, well away from the players' legitimate contracts. In the end, Melbourne continued to win, but only after the largest sanctions in league history and a stripping of their titles. The penalty will be the stripping of three minor premierships and two premierships, the return of $1.1 million in prize money, a fine of $500,000. Number 17, the 2002 Winter Olympic bid scandal. There are allegations the city won the Winter Games for the year 2002 by bribing some members of the International Olympic Committee. Every four years, the Winter Olympics showcase the greatest athletes of the world. And it's also a time for corrupt benefactors to admire their illegal purchases. Seemly things had happened, but we never had the facts. No one had the courage to say, well, here's the ledger, here's what happened. And now we do. In 1995, Salt Lake City was selected to host the 2002 Games. And three years later, the Salt Lake Organizing Committee was suspiciously protective of their financial documents when pressed by reporters. As an athlete, you're training your whole life for that one moment at the Olympics. But America's Winter Olympics were mired in scandal and deficits. It's almost like they didn't want people to know that numerous members of the International Olympic Committee were given political contributions, tuition money, and millions upon millions of dollars. The scandal began last month 
accusations that Salt Lake City had bribed some IOC members with cash, gifts, possibly even the services of prostitutes, so it could get the 2002 games. He broke our heart, Utah, just like that French judge who sabotaged the 2002 Paris figure skating competition. How did that happen? They won that program. There's not a doubt in anyone in the place except for maybe a few judges. Number 16, NFL concussions. Uh, it tells the whole story when you hear the sound of it on this punt return. For years, it was a badge of honor for ex-NFL players to boast about the violent nature of their sport. But the narrative took a dark turn once retired athletes began experiencing symptoms of CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. The football world has been rocked this week by the sad death of a former star. In 2011, Dave Durson took his own life and requested that his brain be studied for trauma. And just one year later after his death, Junior Seau, another player who passed away, was confirmed to be suffering from CTE after a post-mortem examination. The NFL continues to adopt new regulations and protocol to ensure player safety, but off-the-field incidents involving former stars such as Ray Rice and Aaron Hernandez continue to fuel the fire. Number 15, Spanish Paralympics basketball team. The Spanish team were, were I think, laughed at and, and labeled the most unsporting team in history. I mean, unsporting is the wrong word, it's a, it's a euphemism for cheating. During the 2000 Sydney Paralympics, there was more concern for doping than finding out if athletes were legitimate Paralympians. So Fernando Martín Vicente, the head of the Spanish Federation of Sports People with Intellectual Disabilities, had an idea, a terrible idea. The team recruited players who faked having an intellectual disability. They went on to win gold by a huge margin, in Spain celebrated. After beating the Russians in the final, they posed for a victorious team shot and were splashed all over the front page of Marca, the biggest paper in Spain. But one of the players was an investigative journalist. Carlos Ribagorda blew the whistle on the entire scheme. The team was disqualified and Vincente resigned. At the beginning, I thought that it was totally impossible for someone to be capable of carrying out something like this. It just seemed completely incredible. And that was the reason why I got involved. Number 14, Paul Riley. Former North Carolina Courage head coach and two-time NWSL Coach of the Year Paul Riley was considered one of the league's brightest coaching minds in women's soccer. But behind closed doors, he would use his power and influence to coerce players into performing sexual acts. It all came to light after a shocking report from The Athletic gave disturbing details about his behavior, which spanned across several teams and leagues since 2010. The report shared stories from more than a dozen former players of Wiley's, including ex-Thorns Mana Shim and Sinead Farley who he coached in Portland in 2015. The two told The Athletic that Riley, who was then married, invited them to his apartment to drink and told Shim and Farley if they kissed while he watched, the team would get an easier practice the next day. Following the report, the North Carolina Courage fired Riley, and the National Women's Soccer League commissioner, Lisa Baird, resigned. Riley's misconduct is just the latest in a series of incidents involving coaches that have put the league in hot water with many now questioning its future. However, players across the league have stood together and continued to put this issue on notice. And if this isn't a shut up and listen to these players moment, I don't really know what is. Um, devastated, disgusted, but I'm not shocked and that's the problem. Number 13, Calciopoli. In 2006, Investigations into the Italian Football League system unearthed that key figures were working with the referees behind closed doors. Wiretaps revealed that officials were being pressured to favor certain teams during games. Several clubs were at the center of this match-fixing scandal, including AC Milan, Fiorentina, and most notably, Juventus. The latter was hit hardest in the aftermath of this controversy, as they were not only relegated to Serie B, but were also stripped of the title they had won the previous year. Many of those figures whose involvement in the scandal was uncovered would go on to resign in disgrace. Number 12, Tanya Harding. I mean, what kind of friggin' person bashes in their friend's knee? Who would do that to a friend? Here's a scandal so dramatic it inspired a film. Despite representing the same country, figure skaters Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan still had an intense rivalry. Before the 1994 U.S. Figure Skating Championships, Nancy Kerrigan was attacked by Shane Stant. He was contracted to injure her by Sean Eckhart, an associate of Harding's then-husband Jeff Galuli. 
The goal was to make sure that Nancy couldn't compete so that Tanya could claim gold at the championships and at the Winter Olympics. For a time, you thought, we're going to get away with this. Well, sure, I wouldn't have done it. And you had no problem knowing that you could be taking her out of the Olympics. I had no problem until I saw the effect of it. Kerrigan recovered and won silver at the Winter Olympics in 1994, while Harding placed eighth. Number 11, Pete Rose. Pete Rose should be a baseball legend. With many record-breaking feats under his belt, he would have gone down as one of the best hitters in MLB history. However, his gambling scandal in 1989 completely destroyed his career. It was revealed that Rose was betting on Cincinnati Reds games during his time as a player and manager for the team. As a result, he was deemed permanently ineligible from the Baseball Hall of Fame. The banishment for life of Pete Rose from baseball is the, is the sad end of a sorry episode. The hit king's poor decisions and apparent gambling addiction have damaged his legacy forever. Why would you, the cardinal rule of no betting I don't know, I, I was stupid, I, I made mistakes. Number 10, Russia's Olympic doping scandal. It's one thing for an athlete to cheat, but for an entire country to allegedly sponsor the cheating is quite another. After the 2014 Winter Olympics, a Russian state-sponsored doping scandal came to light, with many of their athletes actively participating in taking performance-enhancing drugs and attempting to hide that fact from screenings. The World Anti-Doping Agency releasing findings from their investigation saying over 1,000 Russian athletes competing in summer, winter, and Paralympic sport can be identified as being involved in or benefiting from manipulations to conceal positive doping tests. Once discovered, Russia as a whole was temporarily banned from future Olympic Games. Nonetheless, to this day, the country has remained embroiled in the matter and continues to suffer consequences for their actions. The country is also forbidden from hosting or bidding for major events. This represents the most severe sanction yet for a doping scandal which shocked the world. Number 9. The Hand of God Diego Maradona will forever be hailed among football's elite, but he's had his fair share of controversies. During a quarterfinal match at the World Cup against England in 1986, Maradona would score to give Argentina the lead. But upon closer inspection, it was clear that he had tipped the ball in the net with his hand. Several opposing players protested, but Maradona was still awarded the goal nonetheless. He would later score the goal of the century, and Argentina went on to win the game 2-1. After the game, he famously claimed that the goal was scored, quote, a little with the head of Maradona and a little with the hand of God. Years later, he would admit the obvious, that he did in fact score the goal using his hand. <laughs> for me, man. For me, man. <laughs> It was my hand. With this, I don't mean any disrespect to English fans. But this is something that happens. Number 8. Jerry Sandusky and Penn State These allegations are false. I didn't do those things. After 61 years with Penn State, you could say that Joe Paterno had a bit of clout on campus. We drove two hours to get here just for this, just to say goodbye. But amid a disturbing sexual abuse scandal involving former assistant coach Jerry Sandusky, Paterno's legacy was forever tarnished, and he passed away just two months after being fired. If you know the details, then you already know just how heartbreaking the story is for all involved. Aaron Fisher was the first to accuse Sandusky of being a monster. In fact, when Sandusky was convicted, the judge intentionally avoided an abstract sentence to reinforce the idea that 30 to 60 years in jail had, quote, the unmistakable impact of saying, clearly, for the rest of your life. A community pillar who founded a charity to work with at-risk kids. A position prosecutors now say Sandusky used as a hunting ground for vulnerable victims. Number seven, Larry Nasser. This former USA Gymnastics national team doctor and MSU physician was accused of performing improper acts on hundreds of women whom he was supposed to be treating medically. I'm trying very hard to do things where I'm not being nearly as invasive, but it, it compromises things. Mm -hmm. So I am trying to modify that. Well, the reason I'm asking is that we did have another complaint. Really? Yeah. Nasser's actions dated back over two decades, and over 150 women came forward to testify against him in court. Their powerful statements showed just how terrifying and cruel Nasser truly was towards them. He was sentenced to up to 175 years in prison. You think this is hard for you? Imagine how all of us feel. 
Imagine how it feels to be an innocent teenager in a foreign country, hearing a knock on the door, and it's you. Although justice was served, it ultimately calls into question the integrity and status of the committees and figures in charge who allowed such despicable and vile behavior to go on for so long. Number 6. Tim Donaghy and the 2007 NBA Betting Scandal His father had been a respected ref in college basketball. Tim followed in his footsteps and went even further, making it to the NBA. But Tim said betting was more powerful than all of that. We all know somebody who thinks the NBA is rigged. And after former basketball referee Tim Dunaghy was convicted of fixing games, the conspiracy theorists snickered with laughter. And did betting on the NBA give you a higher high than betting on other sports? I think it gave me a higher high because I was able to predict the outcome of the games. From 2005 to 2007, Dunaghy bet thousands of dollars on games he personally officiated and later received kickbacks from low-level mafia figures. Oh, yeah, and he also worked the infamous 2004 Indiana-Detroit game that resulted in one of the darkest moments in league history, also known as the Malice at the Palace. Dunaghy was one sketchy ref, and after serving 11 months in prison, he naturally wrote a book about his experiences. Number 5. The Houston Astros Sign-Stealing Scandal With some well-positioned camera work, the Astros cheated their way to a World Series win back in 2017. Using unauthorized electronic equipment, the team would utilize live video feeds to decipher and uncover the signs made by opposing team catchers during games. The information would then be relayed to the players by way of banging noises made by hitting a garbage can. Change up. Bang, bang. That sequence is so upsetting, there's no way that is done without technology. They continued to use this system until they were eventually caught in 2019. Arguably the harshest punishment in MLB history, the Astros were fined $5 million and lost their first and second round draft picks in 2020 and 2021. While manager A.J. Hinch and general manager Jeff Lunau were each handed one-year suspensions, Astros owner Jim Crane would fire them both. To make matters worse, in the aftermath, the players would seem unapologetic for taking part in the scheme. I am really sorry about the choices that were made by my team, by the organization, and by me. I have learned from this, and I hope to regain the trust of baseball fans. Number 4. Lance Armstrong Doping Allegations There is a time gap, but the man in yellow is running at him with that usual determination. He was the golden boy of cycling, at least until he began throwing everyone under his wheels. Is there any stopping Lance Armstrong in this Tour de France? And the answer is no, there is not. In one of the most astonishing cases of egocentric behavior the sports world has ever seen, Lance Armstrong furiously denied using performance-enhancing drugs after winning the Tour de France from 1999 to 2005. There's 280 pages of medical records, uh, constant interactions with doctors and nurses and specialists, never once mentioned. It was hard to root against Armstrong, a survivor of testicular cancer and founder of the Livestrong Foundation. But the growing amount of evidence became too much to ignore. I told her to go wherever she wants, her meaning me, mm -hmm. and I'll answer the questions directly, honestly, and candidly. Armstrong ultimately confessed to Oprah, and even that seemed like yet another performance. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. Number three, the Black Sox scandal. Shoeless Joe Jackson, one of baseball's all-time greats. Any true baseball fan knows the name Shoeless Joe Jackson. He was the centerpiece of the 1919 Black Sox scandal, where players were accused of throwing the World Series and banned from baseball for life. Of course, Shoeless Joe was also a central figure in the 1989 film Field of Dreams. What most people don't realize, unfortunately, is that he most likely was not involved in the scandal at all. And the available evidence supports such a conclusion. Even so, the fact remains that America's favorite pastime was undoubtedly fixed, and a classic phrase was born. Say it ain't so, Joe. Shoeless Joe Jackson died in 1951, and 63 years later is still banned from baseball. Number two, the MLB steroid era. There it is.
For nearly 40 years, an unassuming man named Roger Maris held the Major League Baseball single-season home run record. But in the mid-90s, a new trend emerged, juicing. Some thought the ball itself was juiced, and that's why more and more people were coming to the ballpark. But home run numbers were just skyrocketing. However, most fans didn't fully realize the extent of the steroid problem. They really were like cartoon figures, like supermen with these bulging biceps, and they just sucked us in. Mark McGuire hit 70 homers in 98, and three years later, Barry Bonds set the existing record with 73. There's a high drive, deep in the right center field, to the big part of the ballpark, number 71! It was indeed an exciting time, but when the Mitchell Report was released in 2007, the game was tarnished forever. Steroids don't, don't really help you that much physically. Uh, and what they give you can take away somewhere else, and I don't want that. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Pakistan cricket spot fixing scandal. Three players are suspended due to spot fixing. Bishop Sycamore, the football team that played for a high school that didn't exist. Roy Johnson, the head coach for Bishop Sycamore, they're a bit of a mystery in this game. Well, they are a bit of a mystery, a mystery of what type of team we're going to see. Robert Hoitzer and the Bundesliga scandal. Another day, another sport, and another referee fixing and betting on matches. The New Orleans Saints bounty scandal, aka Bounty Gate. Players and coaches were involved in a system that gave out cash rewards for knocking out opposing players. We have Smith, right there. Remember me. I got the first one. I got the first one. Crashgate, a planned crash by the F1 Renault team at the Singapore Grand Prix in 2008, resulted in a disqualification and suspensions. Nelson Piquet crashed on purpose so as to bring out the safety car. This wasn't spying on other teams or lying to the stewards. This was endangering spectators, marshals, and his own safety. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The 2015 FIFA Corruption Case We are here to announce the unsealing of charges and the arrests of individuals as part of our long-running investigation into bribery and corruption in the world of organized soccer. All hell broke loose in May of 2015 when U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch unveiled an intricate bribing scheme involving FIFA executives and corrupt officials. They did this over and over. In fact, FIFA VP Jack Warner even tried to defend himself by citing a satirical news article by The Onion. If the FIFA is so bad, why is it the USA wants to keep the FIFA World Cup? As we've seen with the 2002 Winter Olympics, any event can be bought. And while this scandal may not have come as a big surprise to skeptics, the grand scale of the entire cover-up is simply astounding. We are truly living in a world of magnificent bastards. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.